So what I want to go over is the number line. So the window of improvement, which is also, a I have a video on window of improvement, which is more like an infographic, but the number line is something I do interactively with patients. So let's just say this is zero. So everything above zero is positive and everything below zero is negative. Now what most people do, uh, most rapid responders have is essentially you're doing too many things to trigger or sensitize the system and you're not doing enough things to reset it or keep the nervous system feeling safe. So if you wake up and you feel good, some people wake up and they feel great, other people wake up and they feel worse and they're better as the day goes on. But that's why I also like to ask, you know, how is the time affect your symptoms? So if they say they wake up and it feels good, you might start off with a plus 20. And typically you start texting, you start driving, you're unloading, you're doing a lot of things that potentially are negative or essentially you just are not moving enough because it's not good posture and bad posture. It's the best position is the next position, right? You just have to move well. Movement variability is the key to not having something happen, right? You have to move often and you have to move well, not necessarily get in and out of a good and bad position. So as the day goes on, maybe you're slouching, you're unloading, you're texting, you're driving, each one of these things, and also just as time goes on, because your nervous system is under threat, you've been having this pain for even a week or months or whatever, normally you start off with plus 20, just as time goes on, that's all negative. The more you slouch, the more you uh, are not moving, each one of these activities might be negative one, negative one, negative one. When you finally hit zero, that's where the perception of threat occurs for whatever reason. You know, you might start off with a positive 10. So you can't, it doesn't take as much time. It doesn't take as much activity. It doesn't take as much range. Plus 20 is full, let's just say it's full range. It's sitting as long as you could normally sit. This is whatever your normal baseline is. Once your brain has detected enough, there is a finite amount of position, load, or activity where your brain finally says enough, whether or not that's actually a physical limitation. All right. So once there's a perception of pain or once there's a perception of threat, there's an output of pain and a decrease in motor control. So whatever we do here, you have your triggers, you have your resets. We already went over your triggers when I asked you in your history. That's why I said, you know, what makes it worse? And you might have said driving, texting, stretching, tennis or whatever it is. Those are all your triggers. We also ask what makes it better. You might have said, walking around, moving, getting or stretching. There's always something typically for most rapid responders that makes it better, makes it worse if they're very mindful of things like that. Some people say they don't know what makes it better and makes it worse. But if you really get into it and be, take a good history, you can usually find triggers and things that are potentially going to serve as resets. So when we do something like I do a soft tissue technique or needling or manipulation, each one of those each one of those might be a plus five. It's novel, non-threatening stimulus. Each one of those, so I do a little IASTM, I do a manip. Now you're back at 20 or even 30 if it's greater. So now that buffer zone is bigger, now you can, you have full range again. You can walk longer. It's amazing. You're like the best practitioner in the world. But the reason why you use this analogy for patients is you getting better and staying better is a combination of doing enough resets to stay above zero. So you want to keep the buffer zone big and also avoiding triggers because you can be the most compliant patient in the world and do if this was a plus five every time you did it. But if texting or unloading or otherwise not moving from this position, we're all negatives combined with time. If you did 10 of these an hour. If you're like this for the other 59 minutes, you're also you're improving this, but the rest of the time you're not moving or triggering it, you're also doing too many negatives. So every rapid responder has a balance of avoiding enough triggers and doing enough resets. Is it that simple? This, this is a very simple thing that patients can understand. There's obviously a lot more going on in the nervous system you know, with physiology that I'm explaining, but patients need to have it simple. And they, this makes it so that 
they know that these resets that you do are all temporary. And I describe that as temporary, right? I might, the, the fancier this is, I might have, I might do things that are plus fives or plus tens, but if that's why I start with this as a plus five, right? If I get better, someone better with this and their shoulder moves great now, now they can throw a ball or swing a golf club. And they're like, great, what do I do? I'm like, you just do the same thing. If I did ISTM, the goal is still to get them to load as threat free as possible, because if they load threat free, then the chances of them dosing high enough to keep this above zero, to keep this buffer zone high, it's better than if you send them away with a yellow light. If they did this every time, they're like, oh, my baseline is two, this is four, and Urson said it was okay. It might be okay for the first two or three days, but if it's like on a third day, it's still a yellow light, they're probably gonna be like, oh, I'll just wait till I see them next time and see what happens. And then you just kind of wasted the visit because they stop with the high dosage. Does this make sense? Yeah. All right, good. And I think it's really it's really helpful to use a whiteboard or, you know, I just do it on an iPad um, or, you know, have like my, my computer connected to a laptop or connected to a, a monitor or a big TV. So I think that patients understand this and also that whole thing, you can also describe that as a window of improvement. So other than triggers, just remember also that time will just tend to decrease because a protective and vigilant nervous system, like your nervous system is doing a great job protecting you. That's why you have the output of pain and an alteration in movement and motor control and mobility. It's doing a great job protecting because even pain, you have to reframe positively, right? Like your brain is doing a great job protecting you. But the, the more vigilant the nervous system is, the faster this tends to go negative. So 10 times an hour is a generic prescription, but I usually also just say, you have to do this enough to stay ahead of it. If you, if this makes you better, but then you spend the rest of the time like folding clothes. I had a patient who was better only every, uh, she was better for the majority of the week, except for once a, once a week, she had this unidentified day where she didn't know what she did that day. This worked the majority of like six days a week. When we finally got down to it, she's like, oh, you know, I have a part-time job where I do, um, I work in a dry cleaners and on that day, I fold like 300 pieces of clothing and she's always doing this. So I said on that day, you maybe do 10 of these every 15 minutes just for more variability, right? Because you're doing more triggers than resets. And then she was better because she had to just give herself more novel stimulus or do like the, the contrary or uh, reset that was contrary to the trigger. All right.